All right, so let's talk one more time about Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson words out. Okay, Jordan Peterson not words out. And just if you are a person who has said that particular critique of him more than once, it would be in your best interest to do a little self-examination because there's a better than 85% chance that you're just a dumbass. Honestly, because there's not a lot of word salad coming out of his mouth. And if you're not understanding the things he's saying, they're usually cogent. Once or twice, there's something that's okay, that's a little bit professory. But other than that, most of the stuff he says is cogent. And if you can't understand it, it's not because it's word salad. So, look within. <laughs> it's not word salad. Anyways, when people start to criticize Jordan Peterson a lot of times, you know, you don't understand, they'll, they'll, they'll make a video. And in atheist YouTube terms, they will have research, heavily researched their video. Okay, let me just straighten everything out right here. You disappear for three weeks and read on a subject and make a video about it. That's not in any meaningful sense of the word research. It's not even close. It's not even close to research. You won't even know what your errors are. Let's take Woodford, for example. The, you know, the whole controversy that he got involved in. Let's leave that aside for now. But both sides have claimed all the research. Both sides have, have dug into it for about three weeks. Honestly. And they both claim, I've done all the research. That's not doing all the research. That's not even close. You won't even know where your errors begin and where your errors end. Why? Because that's just scratching the surface. Science is a lot more rigorous than you pretend it is in YouTube land. If science were like that, there'd be no way science would ever get to anything. Why? Because that's not meaningful research. But Woodford has videos on history. Woodford's decent. His videos are decent, by the way. He, I mean, they're not well researched, but he's a, he's a very intelligent person. His videos are well presented and worth checking out. But they're not well researched. And I've heard atheists actually say, that. oh, he does really intensive research for his videos. <laughs> intensive research. Three weeks of three weeks. That's not in any meaningful sense of the word research at all. That's not rigorous enough. That's, and it shows up in his history stuff. He's, he might be wrong in some of his trans stuff because in his history stuff, it's totally out to lunch. Why? Because he doesn't know enough about it. Hasn't really dug that deeply into it so he doesn't know what he's saying is wrong. Now, let's take the case of Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson has spent at least 15 to 20 years, 15 to 20 years on the subject of comparative religion. He has expertise in the field of comparative religion. That's research. 15 to 20 years on the subject, not three weeks to make your video. That's a big difference. You want to tell me Jordan Peterson is word salad. You want to crit criticize Jordan Peterson. Okay, start with his reading list. It's pretty comprehensive. Pre his reading list of books that he's read is pretty comprehensive. There's a couple things missing from there. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Symbolist poets. There's no, there's no Baudelaire in there. I don't, I don't know, maybe. I don't remember. What's, there's a couple things missing. And there's a couple of minor points to quibble with. You know, he's super gay for Solzhenitsyn. I don't know. I never. I, I tried Solzhenitsyn and never really got into it. Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich. I think that's the one I read. Uh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's just not feeling it. The times I tried checking him out, but I wasn't crazy about Solzhenitsyn. And yeah, Jordan Peterson's super gay for Solzhenitsyn. He puts him up there with like Nietzsche and um, he puts him up there with Nietzsche and Dostoevsky. And I'm just not feeling it. Um, now, his reading list, though, in the field of comparative religion is really comprehensive. Just start with the Jung. Those of you criticizing, have you read all the Jung books? I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. Have you read at least even the Joseph Campbell? I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. Iliada? I doubt it. That's just the beginning. That's just scratching the surface. Disappear for five years and read his reading list. Then come back and tell me where he is in error on the field of comparative religion. And then guess what's going to happen? You're going to realize that he isn't. Why? Because you will have done the research the research for yourself and found, wow, there's real substance here. And if you really want to check it out, go look at his Bible series. There's plenty of evidence that the man has expertise in the field of comparative religion. It shows up on almost every sentence out of his mouth. <clears throat> now, where, where people can critique him fairly, okay, he's got a lot of side things he involves himself in. And honestly, I don't care, <laughs> honestly, what he thinks about gender pronoun this or that. It's like, I could care less. Why? Because it's not a field of expertise. It's got nothing really of importance to say in the subject. 
And he involves himself in all these side things, these side controversies that really aren't relevant. But in the field of comparative religion, he has expertise in the area. And if you listen to his videos on those subjects, Maps of Meaning in the Bible series, it's really obvious. It shows up on every single, every five minutes, you will hear something that actually has really valid insight into those subjects. And like I said, the revolutionary aspect of Jordan Peterson, <clears throat> you know, Rachel Oates pointed out he isn't that dissimilar from Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell is actually pretty good sometimes. I rewatched Power of Myth. There's, there are some really good insights in Joseph Campbell. The problem with Joseph Campbell is the problem with a lot of these other people that Peterson falls into a lot less frequently is they tend to, I don't know, just something about the subject itself tends to make people sound like hippie woo artists. You know, he'll say something really insightful and then five minutes later he'll follow it up with like, and then when they say, oh, it's, it's so wonderful and marvelous. You're like, all right, man. <laughs> all right, calm down there, dude. Don't poke out that joint because, uh, you know, that's, that sounds like that first-rate stuff you're smoking. You know, that's the problem with all these guys. It isn't the problem with Peterson. Why? Because he's been scientifically trained. So his analysis tends to fall under rigorous analysis. And he challenges his own thought process ease to examine for whether his own mind is, you know, on point. He will cross-examine himself. That's research. Atheist version of research. You have three weeks of video in the making and you go read the first ten articles you read. Wow, I just heavily researched that subject. No, you didn't. Why? Because you didn't dig deep. Cross-reference. Uh, investigate the actual substance of the study you read to see why it might be an error. Because there are contrary opinions to that. It's a whole process of peer review. See, science is a process that is built on the past, and the peer review is sifting through, is a sifting through process. And, you know, the first couple articles on anything, there's going to be errors in those that people aren't aware of until it's been cross-examined and rigorously analyzed. So let's just clue us in, clue us in right now to the trans, whole trans controversy. It's not knowable yet. Science in its infancy. Ditto for comparative religion. Shouldn't be science in its infancy, but it is science in its infancy. That's where we're at. And Jordan Peterson is just the first step on the beginning of a cusp of an entire wave. And Joseph Campbell was a, was a precursor. So was Iliada. Iliada was more important. Um, big influence on, jo on Jordan Peterson. You want to start doing research on the subject? Start with those two, Jung, Jung Iliada, and Joseph Campbell. That'll take you a month and a half. That's the beginning stage of research. That'll take you two months. I mean, what, what, what atheist YouTubers talk about as research isn't research. And the trans is per, per, perfect example of that. They're arguing from the surface, both of which neither of them have dug very deep into the actual facts and substance there's a problem with using just the latest research as your starting off point. The latest research could be wrong and you don't know why it is. Why? Because you have no real education on the subject. It's a more elaborate way of talking out of your butt, but it's exactly what you're doing. Oh, I just read this article that says so-and-so. You know? Yeah, that's all for now. It's talking out of your butt. Honestly, it is. Oh, so what? It is. Anyways, that's all for now. I'm